998. Within the span of one hour Tuesday night, there were two officer involved shootings. Here in Oildale, a sheriff's deputy shot and killed an armed man during a chase. And here on White Lane, a Bakersfield police officer shot a suspected home intruder who had a gun. All of the officers were equipped with body cameras. When videos from both those incidents are released, the public can make its own judgment. Were the officer and deputy acting in self-defense or could deadly force have been avoided? But for about a third of shootings by law enforcement this year, there has not been body cam footage to show the truth of what happened, especially in remote areas of the county. You could call areas of Kern that look like this the wild, wild west. People in these remote parts are being shot and killed by law enforcement with no video evidence of what happened. Kern County is known for having one of the highest rates of officer involved shootings in America. That number is rising in 2020. So in a year of protests over police brutality, when people are calling for more police accountability, Kern County doesn't have enough body cameras to go around. I can breathe. Please leave my dick. In 2020, seeing is believing. Usually, video evidence clears officers. Get on the ground! Other times, it doesn't. I'm about to die to see. <laughs> we never want to see what happened to George Floyd ever happen again. And I think some of that frustration out there was all the things that happened when there wasn't a video camera around. And that's why I believe a body camera helps everybody have the truth, the honesty, and transparency that we've all desired. But what happens if there are no witnesses to whip out their phones and when there are no body cameras to record what happened? It makes me feel powerless. Now it's like we don't know who to trust. On September 3rd, just after sunrise, 37 year old Fernando Napolis was walking along the stretch of Highway 14. For the past couple of years, he's been homeless, wandering the desert and living in makeshift shelters. When someone driving by saw him, they called the sheriff's office, saying Napolis was carrying a gun. We have to go with what they're saying when it's very hard for us to even believe that that's what happened. When Deputy Christopher Saldana arrived, KCSO said Napolis got out of a car. KCSO said Napolis raised a shotgun at the deputy, and that's when Deputy Saldana fired. Napolis's family is confused how he could have gotten a gun or a car. We want to know if he had some last words. We want to know how, how many times does, did the police officer shoot him? We want to know if my brother was walking away from the police officer or if he was walking towards the police officer that gave him that right to shoot him. The family was relying on body cam footage to give them clarity, even if it was to exonerate the deputy. If my brother was at fault, I would have been like, good job. You did what you had to do. Yeah. But KCSO said, there's no video of any kind. That's because the 2017 federal grant that funded body cams for the sheriff's department wasn't enough to supply the whole department. Only deputies who work in Greater Bakersfield and Wasco have the equipment. Deputies who patrol the remote areas of our huge county do not. Like in Mojave, where a month after Napolis was shot, there was another fatal deputy involved shooting. There was no reason, no reason at all for him to shoot him. On October 2nd, 39 year old Michael Lewis had just pulled out of this drive through with his girlfriend and her two teenage daughters when a deputy pulled him over back there to check his parole. The rest happened within a matter of minutes. We got off the car. And he was right there on the floor. <laughs> According to KCSO, Lewis hopped out of his truck and ran. They say Lewis then ran back to his truck, reached inside, and charged at the deputy. That's when the deputy fired. Sir, we need you. Lewis's family is furious with KCSO's account. That's not what happened. That's Why are they slandering my father's name? Yes. Like that? The family insists Lewis was unarmed. No gun, no knife. This situation just makes my father another statistic of another African-American shooting. And it's unacceptable. In 2015, law enforcement in Kern had the highest kill rate in America, with 23 officer-involved shootings. After investigative reports by KGET and The Guardian newspaper, that number dropped drastically in 2016. Despite fewer officers firing at civilians, 
no officers were shot that year. Since then, the count has crept back up. With 2020 not over yet, we've already topped last year's count with 19 officer-involved shootings. 14 of those involved KCSO deputies. Only half or seven had body cam footage, and only one of those videos was publicly released. Bakersfield police had four officer-involved shootings. There was body cam footage for all of them, each available for public viewing on BPD's website. Yes, I did. We worked very hard over the last several years to uh, improve relationships to repair hurts, to increase the level of trust. We're not there yet, but it is a work that we're continuing to do. As of July, all uniformed Bakersfield police officers are equipped with body cams. BPD got money to do that through the city's Measure N, a one cent sales tax increase voters passed in 2018. KCSO doesn't have the same funding, despite Sheriff Youngblood's response after the death of George Floyd in May. We've done a lot of things to try and mitigate uh, abuse, abuses by officers. We've equipped all of our patrolmen with body-worn cameras. In the past few months, we've asked Sheriff Youngblood several times for comment. He's declined every time. So Lieutenant Joel Swanson spoke on his behalf. Uh, we felt that we were gonna be able to get the funding when the new budget funded. However, due to COVID and other cuts, the budget wasn't fully funded and we weren't able to purchase them in this budget year. So outside of Greater Bakersfield, no substation except Wasco has any body cameras. Our hope is within the next year to be fully funded with it, but until then we're doing law enforcement the way I guess it has been for many years. We're getting witness statements, uh, we're getting statements from officers, uh, we're looking for surveillance footage, and we're looking at the physical evidence of each individual scene. According to our analysis, a body cam costs $3,100 for the first year, then $1,050 each year after for video storage. To fully equip the department, KCSO needs at least 200 more body cams. So the first year alone would cost $620,000. The department doesn't know exactly when it will get that money. So that's why we put forward the Commitment to America Security Act. This act, introduced in October by Congressman Kevin McCarthy and House Republicans, would add funding for 500,000 body cams nationwide. But it's not cheap. Well, we're talking about not to defund the police, but to add $1.75 billion. Billion with a B. With a B. Those who want the police defunded say they've lost trust in law enforcement. But others, like Congressman McCarthy, say the police need more money to build that trust back up. Where would this funding, where would this money come from? Well, we would fund it through the taxpayers, and we would make it part of our federal program. I, I don't think it's costly to have safe and secure streets. McCarthy's call for more body cams is a beacon of hope for Kern County. But the timeline of his bill is vague, and political differences play a role. Well, we could do this very quickly if it was passed. Can the Sheriff's Department rely on a grant to at least partly get there in, let's say, the next year, the next few years? Oh, I, if we passed it, uh, yes, they could. Even if the bill passed, it would take time for Kern to apply for a grant, and it would take years for the body cams to actually be put into service. My brother, you know, my brother, he took a bullet. In the meantime, what do we do while you know, men and women in Kern County are being shot by officers and deputies. Well, you got the training now, and I mean, it is a very dangerous job to be a police officer or to be a sheriff. Think about these deputies who are working in Eastern Kern all by themselves. There are people that are shooting at their shooting at the officers, coming at them with weapons and others. The families of Fernando Napolis and Michael Lewis might disagree with Congressman McCarthy's assessment of deputies, but one thing they can agree upon is that body cameras are one of the clearest ways to prove what happened. They present the public with the question, what would you have done if you were the officer? And they present law enforcement with the question, was use of force really necessary here? In East Kern, Karen Hua, 17 News.